You thought the channel was done for. You thought I would never release a video again after a week of uploadless quiet time. Well, after some behind the scenes projects, ask me to say in the comments or anything. You know, you want a video on this? Cardboard for one card. All cardboard, some toothpicks, some hot glue. But, I'm coming back, and you know it's a Wednesday. Welcome to the next episode of Razor and Blade. So, I know it's going to be hard to beat the first episode with, you know, everything interesting that went on in it, but I still plan to do some interesting things this episode. Uh, what i did done with my setup, made of cardboard, and, well, my setup in general. The rundown going from one side to the other. Also, uh, say if you want a Twitch channel in the comments, you know, uh, get them Prime subs and maybe finally get some items off of YouTube and Twitch. So first we have a Logitech G602. I got this thing for 30 bucks. It's wireless. It's pretty quick. Six macro keys on the side. Two DPI switches. Um, power saving and power usage mode. It's It's a pretty good mouse. It's low latency and... Works quite well. That mouse is sitting atop a solid surface, which is a Corsair mouse pad. Don't ask me the name. But it's the one that has Qi wireless charging. I can't use that with the mouse, but I use it with my phone just about every night. As we move across, we have, well, my razor blade. Don't even like that keyboard color. I got purple fade uh, green. Kind of nice looking. It's the base model. I am. Cheap, like 200 bucks to a 1070 model. Say if you guys want that. Um, and an Apple keyboard. I will tell you why I use this, and it's not only for that extra travel. Over here, we got a wireless Xbox controller, uh, some Jabra headphones, although the Bluetooth isn't great on them, they don't like to connect that much. And they're hiding on top of a little Porsche uh, hard drive. See, that thing's cool. Uh, in the back, I have just an Amazon Echo and an Orbi internet router. That's how I connect my computer up with LAN. I'm sure after seeing it, you're wondering why I use this Apple keyboard. Um, now, the travel is a lot nicer. So you can see here, actuation distance is very short. And compared to this, the actuation is quite good more travel. Now, I'm sure you want it, so I'm going to do a keyboard sound test. Let's start with the razor. As you might also notice, the Razer has an interesting keyboard where the shift button is short and some keys are lightly shifted around. But that allows for playing Fireboy and Water Girl fairly. Yep, that's right, full sized arrow keys. Um. Okay, just. Yeah, ignore that. Now, on to the Apple keyboard. So, as you can tell from that, the Apple keyboard does sound louder, but that's just because it doesn't have as good stabilizers, so... Kinda rocky. Uh, I'm gonna try and get it close in there. All the zoom. Has some light wiggle to it. And also, here's an example of that keyboard thing I was talking about. Half-sized arrow keys. You couldn't even do full-size, like a page up, page down thing there. No. But you will also see, now that I'm zoomed in, the actuation difference. Look how much travel there is. Uh, fingernail for scale? Not much. Of 
quite a bit. Uh, this does make louder gaming sessions, just because that space button is a lot quieter. Now, let's move on to the mouse. The mouse is amazing. I can't recommend it more. It's kind of old. The latency is mild. I might actually test that in a minute. But it is so comfortable. You're never going to have your finger rub on the table or whatever surface because it has a finger rest. Uh, the other side, I have big hands, so they kind of sometimes lay. My pinky finger may lay on the ground. Now, ergonomics are amazing. Feels really comfortable. Every key is accessible by either just moving your finger in different ways. And fully programmable macros. So I have shift up here because it kind of hurts my pinky finger to sprint in games using shift. And I have a spam click for this button for clicker games. Because why not? Thinking how I'm going to test that latency. I'm going to try and use my super slow-mo camera and see if I can pick up, you know, like maybe entering a key taking longer. I don't know if it'll work. But yeah. video I'm sure you can see that there's like a tiny amount of delay when using the computer's built-in keyboard. Trust me I'm not damaging the computer with this little rubber feed underneath. So now I'm going to use this and I don't know see what their latency is. We can deduct that the latency is actually pretty much the same. There isn't much of any latency when using this keyboard, which impresses me quite a lot. I've only done that test now, uh, and this is my real reactions. So now I'm going to explain why I'm using that keyboard. As you may know, this is a gaming laptop, so of course it gets hot, and the fans are placed underneath to give it more room for ports, and so it can look so clean. Um, so if I actually take this here... and place it off to the side. This is the first mod I made. This is a perfectly measured to fit um, stand for breathing. So it uses hot glue that is dried to glue, pretty much stick it to the ground. And it lifts the laptop up, up enough that it can breathe better. It does leave these smudges, which just wipe off with a little bit of water and everything. So that's not something to worry about. The next mod is to go with my little choppers here. Very nice. I got these for 50 bucks on Prime Day. Uh, and that is a headphone stand. I've wrapped this in some marble wrap, which likes to come up right there for some reason. It's balanced pretty well, uh, as long as you put the headphones around here. Anything further will make it tip. Uh, I've also tried to raise it a bit in the front with that hot glue there, so, you know, it's raised up. And it works really well. It hides along with my little storage slot there. And just looks nice in the corner of my room. All those concerns, yes, I did clean up the splotches. So a nice clean surface on the desk. You can place the stand back down. Also, you can bask in the glory of my Minecraft sets. And return the computer to its original position. For holding five pounds consistently, uh, it actually does an impressive job. average folk. Description is not enough to really get the idea of something. And that's why I'm grabbing this here. Within this binder bag of mine, I have, well, blueprints for what I'm going to do to my desk. Some of you may know I'm a bit of an artist. Uh, and, well, I sketched out renditions of what I want to do in my room. I've been looking at a monitor and, you know, mechanical keyboard to improve my travel more than a tall butterfly switch. So, once I get to my room, I will show you guys what that is. So I want to make changes to the setup. You can't disagree that 
It looks pretty cool right now, especially with the computer looking like it's floating. Of goal. Uh, ignore the big square lights. I just thought of those for fun. But compared to my room, I've given as high accuracy as possible to represent that corner of my room. Yeah. So just as you can see in this diagram, I've moved my laptop from the center off to the side. And probably misrepresented how big my laptop is. Probably takes a little more than that little back spot. And I plan on putting the bigger keyboard, uh, Razer Mechanical most likely, just so I can sync it up with the Chroma and have some sweet, sweet visuals right in place of the Apple co uh, compete. Dear goodness me. I'm not going to refilm this because I'm too lazy. But yeah, instead of the Apple keyboard. And in the back, I've been looking at a Samsung Space Monitor. You want to know why? Because it can involve cardboard in it. So that thing clamps to the back here. But the thing is, it uses a clamp mechanism. So I'd have to make a cardboard thing that sticks up here to lift the bottom of my table. Making it a flat surface for it to clamp to. Uh, so yeah, that's my future plans. Hope to have them out by at least Christmas. Maybe even sooner, because I have an event going on that involves me quite heavily. Uh, and you know what? Let's move on to cable management, because I'm sure some of you might either be cringing or think it's pretty good. So for most angles, that's all you see. Just a loop. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't I just make it, you know, so the cables tuck straight up? Well, uh, you see, I have a problem with that, and that's a, this is a fancy desk from Costco. I say fancy, but it's one of the cheapest desks I looked at with a glass top. So I need some cable that's hanging here so that if the desk goes up, I don't drag my wall socket out. I also decided to kind of use the strap on my uh, power brick to just keep it up here to make it look cleaner. And most of my wiring is handled up at the top. Out that way is my keyboard cable and... What is that? Actually, I don't have anything else setting that way. My keyboard cable, oh yeah, and my desk cable, of course, the one that plugs into the little motor. And then heading this way is my computer cable, Orbi router, and Amazon Echo. Okay, I didn't, I didn't wake it. So yeah, that's what I have under here. I might flip this power brick upside down, but I don't want to run the risk of resetting the thing for some reason. So yeah. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm not plugging these two USB things straight into my laptop, so I can uh, take advantage of the tiny USB port on the back of the charger, it's cause that would look pretty ugly to have two massive ta cables just dangling out of my computer. But, and this is not actually a big one, if I do get that big setup, I'm going to get a USB-C to four USB-A adapter. Most of Razer's keyboards usually take two cables, and this takes two cables. I'd route it, just put it to the back here, and then plug all that into there. Other future plan that just involves me getting around to going to Best Buy or hunting through some drawers is instead of using this brick, replacing it with one of those, you know, power strips. And then clamping that, or not clamping, but maybe zip tying, I used reusable zip ties by the way, to the top. So only one wire goes from there to the top. Well actually two, because I'd plug my computer in there for more power delivery. Along with that would be all the other wires, which would be up there now, and just go over the respective places. Meaning only two wires would be visible underneath of this. Guys, I hope you enjoyed my setup tour. Uh, sorry I didn't upload in a while, and I hope people are still going to watch this, because I haven't uploaded in a while. And I'll see you guys sometime soon. Sorry I didn't upload another one of these uh, last Wednesday either. Yeah, I forgot to give you some time uh, for those end cards to roll out instead of laying over myself. And uh, I kind of wanted to just go through the RGB effects on my computer. Maybe lengthen the video a bit too. Oh, yeah. Private information. Wait, did my, did my keyboard die? No, it didn't. So, let's go through some of these effects. Now, a uh, fun fact, even though Razer doesn't support these, and they're all in, like, the special version of the Synapse, the, uh, the, I don't know, beta version, I guess? They, uh, I played Apex Legends, because I was bored, and realized that they support multi-zone RGB, 
on a keyboard that says it's only a single zone. So let's go so through some of these effects. Now, in the bass chroma studio, we have just generic spectrum cycling, which just is pretty simple. It cycles through different colors. I need to like speed this up or something. All right, yeah, that doesn't want to work. Next, you have static. Wow, it's static. Looks clean if you want to take it to an office building, I guess. Uh, then you have wave, one of the fun ones. It waves the colors across the board. I want to tell you guys a bit about the keyboard I'm looking at, too. I am looking at the Huntsman Elite, but I'm looking at it used because, dear goodness, that thing is expensive new. Like, how do you think you're going to sell a keyboard for $200? But the aftermarket sells them for only a tiny bit over half the price. And that thing has crazy opto-mechanical keyboard switches. Per key lighting, you can play Snake on the keyboard. And underglow. That would look so cool because it would reflect through my glass desk, leaving a wide area of discolor. Uh, next we have wheel. Some of the it would also have some different effects compared to this because it has you know per key so every time you tap a light would ripple out that's cool um another one is just better looking you know a, a wheel so you can see this kind of because it's only quad zone it can only really short show it in four areas that would have per key so it would actually you know look like that and it would sync with my computer so if i set it over there sadly my computer will only be one zone for that i could just have my computer spectrum cycle and then have wave or whatever here and i think it would gain a few others including fire just looks like fire um and i want to say that's it but i'm sure there's more audio meter uh breathing uh reactive ripple oh yeah starlight so it just twinkles now and then and ambient awareness so yeah those are the ones that'll be in that you know if I get, even like, I'm probably looking at the Black Widow or the Huntsman, because also looking at both used, because the Black Widow is really good used. It's just that I prefer the key switches and the Huntsman. If I get either of those, you know I'm going to have to make a 10 minute video about those key switches alone. Well, I think this is a longer than average video, even though I was expecting it to be pretty short. Hope you all had a good watch, and I will see you guys next time.